The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Coming up, Caleb Freeman suffered a severe traumatic brain injury after a near fatal car accident. The doctors were pretty honest with us the first night. You know, they didn't expect him to live through the night. And uh, they said, if he does wake up, you know, your son, as you know him, will never be the same again. I had something odd stacked against me. I can't be number one, talk eight again. And whenever you're being told those things, you feel pretty helpless. Hi, I'm Sheila Walsh. Welcome to Live Today. I'm here with Randy Robison. And I'm really excited that they're tuned in today, Randy, yeah. because I'm thinking of the number of you right now who just feel hopeless, mm. you know, who've seen the things that have been happening in our country and around the world over the last couple of years, and you just think life is out of control. Well, our guest today would beg to differ. Their book is called But God. Please welcome Jeremy and Caleb Freeman. It is so good to have you here. Thank you so much. It's good to be with you guys. Now, this is not just a, a book title or a T-shirt slogan for you guys. Right. Uh, if, could you take us back to the time where life radically changed and you guys had to figure out what the but God could do in your lives? Mm. Oh, absolutely. We, uh, you know, Caleb was 16 years old, driving down the road as a regular day in the Freeman household and uh, lost control of his truck and a semi-truck hit him, 75,000 pounds. Fast forward to the emergency room, they're not giving us any information on him. Uh, I pulled this nurse to the side and I said, ma'am, can you tell me what's happening with our son? And she said, uh, I don't know how, to, she says, nobody talked to you yet? And I said, no, and she said, I don't know how to tell you this, but your son needs a miracle. And uh, we'd already lost the son you know, several years ago to cancer. And so the thought of losing another child was like unbearable to us. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got my phone out and I sent a message to my staff, my family, my close friends and said, here's what the doctors and nurses are saying. And I typed in two words, but God. I had no idea that it would ever be on a t-shirt or much, much less a book. It was a our desperate cry in that moment that God has the final say, right? No doctor, no nurse, God has the final say. So we were crying out to him. That's really what God, what God means to us. But you're, you're a pastor, right? Correct. And um, you dedicate this book to your brother and to your son, Trey. That's right. And I wondered, how has the tragedy in your family impacted who you are as a pastor? Hmm. I would say that in my life, um, God has used suffering in more ways than anything else, more than my education, uh, more than e even uh, other ministry experience. But suffering has kind of shaped us into the, pe the person I need to be, the father, the husband, the follower of Jesus, and of course, the pastor that I need to be. You know, suffering has a way of doing that. It, yeah. It's uh, our, our verse is 2 Corinthians 4.18. We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Mm -hmm. For what is seen is temporary, what is unseen is eternal. So suffering has shaped me in more ways than I could even, even communicate. Wow. Now, Caleb, after the accident, you know, they didn't know if you would live. Uh, they said you might not ever walk or talk. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what's, what have the last several years been like for you? Uh, it's been amazing. <laughs> I feel like it's just shown me what the true heart of God is, like how much it cares, because I had something odd stacked against me. I can't be number one, talk eight again. And whenever you're being told those things, you feel pretty hopeless. But then you notice after thousands of prayers get lived up to Jesus, like you start seeing all those miracles performed. Like now I can tell you as a 21 year old who's eating, walking and talking again, I can tell you it doesn't matter what people say in your own lives because God will always have the final say. That's right. I, I'm just wondering how, um, how you have changed as a person, because I, I read in the book that you used to, of all the kids, that you were the shy one. <laughs> that seems to have 
changed. <laughs> yeah. what, explain that process to me. What happened in you? Mm. Oh, yeah, that's out the window. That's out the window. <laughs> the window. <laughs> yeah. Man, the window. Because, like, when God uses you, he has to change you all the time first. And that's exactly what I've seen God do with me. Because, like, I was terrified to talk in front of any people before the, like, but, like, God had knew they had a message he wanted me to share. Mm. So he's given me a boldness and a desire to just talk to everyone I come in contact with because it's to me, like, everyone, like, they're worth it, like. Yeah. Uh, eternity is a very real next chapter in everyone's life. Mm. So I feel like he's given me this story so I cannot waste a moment, not waste an opportunity and right. share it with every single person I come in contact with so that hopefully they can embrace the same hope I have. Wow. Mm. wow. So that, that was in 2017, the accident? That's yes. right. Mm -hmm. now, he, he still has some difficulty with some motor skills, right. the speech, right? Mm -hmm. But take us a little bit through the journey of the last, you know, several years. So well, well, I'm kind of confused. Who's saying I have difficulty with speech? Are, are you? <laughs> it, that's what I heard from her. That's Sheila, what actually. she said. Yeah, no, this is why I love you, but because see, you have this crazy, wild sense of humor. Yeah. That he's quick-witted, quick, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So obviously, I mean... <laughs> There's a lot that's happened yeah. from the wreck oh, yes. until now. I'd, I'd love to hear some of the, the progress, progress he has made and continues to make. Well, it's amazing. You know, they, the doctors were pretty honest with us the first night. You know, they didn't expect him to live through the night. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said if he does wake up, you know, your son, as you know him, will never be the same again. They did not expect him to, to you know, he, he was going to be on support the rest of his life. They meant that as a negative. They meant that as a negative. That's yeah. right. Yeah, absolutely. And so we ended up finding this hospital in Denver, Colorado. We moved our whole family up there. Oh, wow. And we would spend five months, five long months there. But one day, he'd been in a coma for eight weeks, right, two months. Mm -hmm. And we asked him every day. Hey, nod your head, blink your eyes, give us a thumbs up, no response. And then one day, out of the blue, his occupational therapist said, Caleb, can you nod your head yes? And what'd you do, bro? I just... Nod the head, boom. Well, what took you so long, right? So he, he wakes up and God just begins to wake him up. And it was, I mean, he really made some tremendous progress at, uh, at Craig Hospital at that point. Then we went to Omaha, Nebraska, another hospital for three months. He had to have his, his uh, left ear reconstructed in Boise, Idaho. Wow. So he's been through the gamut of, of treatment and therapy. Then we got back and my, you know, this he was the number one cross country runner in his high school, varsity basketball team. He's having to relearn how to tie shoes and just just do all the normal things. So that first year was really hard for us as a family. He was in a wheelchair walker yeah. and just slowly, steadily, day by day, week by week, God just kept restoring him. And Caleb has a great motor, great work ethic. Uh, so we like to say, man, God God did it, but God put in him what was also needed because right. Caleb had yeah. to work hard too. And uh, he worked really hard. So here we are five years later and they say, you don't make any progress two years after the accident. But what do we say to that? Hashtag? By God. By God. <laughs> God has the final say on that, right? Caleb, yeah. let me ask you, have you ever asked God, why me? <laughs> Um, oh, early on this wreck, when I was still holding on to what I wanted for my life, sure. I, I wanted to be a professional athlete so bad. Wow. But it showed me sometimes God's dream for your life is different from yours. Mm. Because my dream for my life mm. was to get like a really big pop from punk sports. I'd be able to share Jesus that way. Yeah. But God told me his plan was so much bigger and better mm. because by taking sports away, he's allowed a bigger platform than I ever thought possible right. to generate out of that. So it took me, like, and that was honestly easier to get than it would have been to get playing sports. Wow. So God's plan 
This is something I would never try. That's right. Wow. <laughs> how, how has this journey impacted your church and your immediate family? Yeah, you know, uh, one of our big concerns uh, when Caleb uh, was in the coma was our other children. Sure. Uh, I mean, you haven't already had lost a brother, just the idea of, of another one possibly being gone. As parents, you realize, man, you, you try to protect and, and, and guard your family, but at the end of the day, God loves them more than you do. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to release your kids to the Lord in so many different ways. And uh, by God's grace, every one of our kids, man, they love the Lord, you know, and our two little ones, uh, they're figuring out how to love the Lord, you know, uh, they're little, but, uh, but our older kids, they've, they've really um, embraced kind of our life. And I actually think suffering has helped them. They, you know, they're very mature for their age, uh, our children and our church. How many church. children do you have? Well, we have, we have a total of seven, you know, trades wow. with the Lord, but six that are, and we adopted our last two. Mm -hmm. So here we are, Emily and I in our mid forties and we're raising little ones again, right? I mean, it's like, what are we doing? Yeah. Uh, I'm not worthy, yeah. I'm not yeah. worthy. <laughs> <laughs> but our church has been amazing too. And I mean, you know, you, you kind of grow through suffering together. Yeah. Our church is strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, know, you know, when you suffer together, you grow together and then man, the Lord just, he's poured out a spirit upon our church and we're seeing God do amazing things uh, in, in our church as well. One of the things I love about the book um, is you've got excerpts from Emily's journal, oh, yes. journal in here mm -hmm. and your mom started writing in this journal while you're in in intensive care. That's right. And I just, I wondered how, um, like, how has your marriage been impacted? Mm -hmm. Because people often say, that grief is a greater wedge than it is a glue. Mm. But for you, that doesn't seem to be the case. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because here we are in, in Dallas, you know, we're filming this and and it's the anniversary of our son, Trey, going to, to be with the Lord nine years ago. And, you know, I was thinking about this. I thought, where would I be today if I didn't have the Lord? Well, I mean, I, I'd probably be dead because I don't know that I could have handled the grief on my own or I'd be divorced. Mm -hmm. And uh, because, you know, most people, most couples that have all the suffering, they don't, it doesn't push them together, it pulls them apart. But just truly by the grace of God, uh, my wife and I, um, our marriage is stronger now than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think suffering has a way of doing that, right? If you let the Lord do with it what he wants to do, it makes you stronger. Mm -hmm. We grieve differently. We've gone through things differently, but we've given each other space to grow and, and all those things. And, and our marriage is, is it's, it's awesome. You know, we serve the Lord together. Here we are today. Instead of wallowing in our grief, we're letting God use our grief, you know, for his glory. And so some, in some ways we get strength by telling our story yeah. and by watching what God's doing through our suffering because it matters. All suffering matters, you know. Yeah. Nothing's wasted with God and we both believe that. Yeah. What do y'all see, both of you? I want, both of you, when you share your story, because mm -hmm. it's a family story, you know, right. what do y'all see from the people that hear you? What do we see, Caleb? Uh... Uh, I love it, like, uh, for me, it shows me, like, I, I feel like I'm a nobody on this earth. <laughs> but what I'm seeing is that God doesn't need someone who's, like, super well-known on this earth. Mm -hmm. When God wants something done, mm -hmm. he's going to bring it to pass <laughs> through our means he finds necessary. Because I'm watching as I'm speaking and sharing about the suffering I felt like I had. I'm saying it wasn't all about me because mm -hmm. for this momentary time or on this earth, if I have to live with a brain injury, mm -hmm. that is so worth it mm -hmm. because I'm seeing sharing about this wreck and seeing people change mm -hmm. their eternities for all of eternity. Wow. Yeah. Like, that's so worth it, like, mm. that doesn't just affect them day to day, that affects them for all of eternity. That's right. I mean, what we, a perspective, if absolutely. every one of us right. mm -hmm. had that perspective, yeah. how it would change. You even went on and graduated from college. I mean, what was that first day like, showing up? Uh, well, it was pretty awesome, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, because Normally going to school, well, I had to think back to how I was in elementary, middle school, and high school. Like, wow. I was a very shy kid for most of my time. Yep. So I thought about what would I do if I went to college as a shy kid? Probably went and sat and like, did my work without talking to people. Yeah. 
But the fact that God changed me so much to where I'm talking to every single kid in my class, <laughs> I'm getting another professor, mm -hmm. I'm saying, this is such a more fun way to live. Like, Listen, when he walked I across, when he walked across the stage at graduation, he's like the most popular kid in this school. He only been there two years. It was a two-year degree because he got to know every single person. Hey, Jesus loves you. God loves you. He was always on a mission. Uh, I watched that. It was, yeah, amazing. it was amazing. Yeah. And this is why I say, curse you, COVID. Curse you, COVID. Because <laughs> when I was in high school. I had a goal to learn every kid's name in my high school. Mm. And I would have gone there. I just needed time. But COVID ruined it. But COVID shut yeah. the whole school down. Like, Yeah, but I don't think anything will shut you down that's anymore. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. 100%. Thank you. <laughs> when you look um, forward for the next two or three years, what do you hope to see God mm. do through your life? Oh, I just pray that more and more spaghetti events all over the country can continue to come because that's what I love to see. I love getting to share and seeing kids as to respond to the gospel because mm -hmm. that's what encourages me to keep on living and keep going because if God can use me, I feel like that's a guy that's worth living for. That's Absolutely. It. Yeah, it, it would be easy. It would be understandable if you guys sort of just retreated, mm -hmm. just took care of your own, you know. But right. you guys have really made an effort to reach out to others. Why is that such an important part of who you are? Yeah, I think, you know, I think, like I mentioned earlier, it's it's a part of our healing. It's a way we heal. You know, Caleb and I, it's not just about the stage. You know, he loves to travel. We're like, we like to say we're father and son, but we're like college roommates. I mean, we're living together a lot. And uh, so I'm we... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> exactly. Oh, thank you. That's much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> we get lots of road time together, but we've been in the smallest little church in Oklahoma, one of the biggest in Texas. But what I love is everywhere we go, people lock into Caleb, whether it's a child or an adult, he is, God's hand is on his life. And so yeah. we're seeing, like really, we're seeing people's lives change. We also make a lot of hospital visits and we pray for people. That's why we're excited about the book. We can actually give the book to people and say, man, this is our journey. This is what God did in our life. And so I think that to answer that question, it's we seeing people's lives changed is what keeps us going. Yeah. To know that you only get one life, right? Yeah. Only one life will, will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. I mean, that's C.T. Studd said that. It's yeah. like, that's our mission, right? That is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. What's, what's the website for people that want to contact you or pre-order the book? Yeah, so it's butgodthebook.com. Okay. You can go on there, get all the info, contact us, butgodthebook.com. And, and uh, it's got to freebies. Some of Emily's journal freebies are on there. Oh. And just really kind of a cool, cool thing. And mm -hmm. you, they can ask you to come to their group, their church or school, absolutely. whatever. They can hit us and, up. That's okay. right. And we'd love to come. And again, there's no place. This guy will speak oh. in a closet somewhere. <laughs> uh, so we go anywhere, right? It's, it's, it's a blessing. Oh, it's pretty can cause it like with the audience of just like two people uh -huh. all the way to the audience of like a million. 47,000. <laughs> that, that the cap? Okay, we'll, we'll keep that. 47 is the cap, I no, guess. But seriously, if, if you guys are, if you're interested in, in contacting them, please do. And you know, their heart for reaching out to, to help others who, who need hope mm -hmm. uh, and to restore them to our Creator God. It's, it's right. the heart of us mm -hmm. here, Sheila, and, and I'm excited about what we get to do in that regard as well. Yeah, one of the things that we care most about um, here at Life is that right now there are many young girls around the world who have been trafficked and who feel like there is no hope. And we want to bring that but God message mm -hmm. to them. So, will you watch this? This is the hardest trip that I have been on with life. The situation in Southeast Asia is getting so much darker. We have been out in the streets at night and we've seen these little girls being forced into sex trafficking. And yet, to balance that, I've seen real hope. Human trafficking is one of the darkest evils in this world. The depravity it takes to kidnap, to sell, and to rape a child is matched only by the virtue and strength needed to oppose it. 
Fighting such systemic evil requires a prayerful strategy. Our teams on the ground work alongside local law enforcement to rescue girls who have been trafficked into the sex slave trade by conducting raids and arresting the criminals involved. Survivors of sex trafficking have often spent years in captivity and their minds and personalities have been altered. To restore these girls, we provide them with shelter and offer them the hope and healing only found in Christ's love. It's been said an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. As I watched these kids today, I thought this actually could be the most important day in their life. This could be the day that they learn what human trafficking is all about. This is the day that they get equipped to know what to look out for, what to say no to. In another part of the world, there's a girl entirely unaware she's about to be kidnapped and sold. But if we can reach her before the predators, we'll save her from a horrific future and completely shut the traffickers down. Reach, rescue, restore. More than words, this is a fight against hell itself. God is moving in the darkness and saving lives, one life at a time. Please keep helping us. It's changing the world. I will never forget my first trip. I thought I understood a little bit about sex trafficking. I knew nothing. So many of these girls that I was spending time with are 12 and 13, and they're just young innocents. Some guy will go to their village and say, hey, you, you know, would you like to come see? We've got some little puppies in the van, or if you come to our village, we can feed you a, a really good meal. And they're innocent. They're like, yeah, thank you. And what happens is they drug their meal, and that child wakes up hours later with some man beside her who has raped her, and she's just a child. And honestly, after my first night, my first day and night there in Southeast Asia, I remember going back to the little hotel where we were staying and literally laying on the floor and just sobbing because it felt so overwhelming. It felt so hopeless. But I felt the Lord say to me, Sheila, get up and dry your eyes and do something. And that's our commitment. It's a three-part thing, reach, where we go into the villages and we teach these children what to avoid, what to run away for. And then we literally are Christ's boots on the ground. I mean, we will go in at midnight and kick down those doors and then bring these young girls to this place. We've got a beautiful place. One of them is called House of Destiny, where they're told you are not a number to God. You have a hope and you have a future, but we're asking you to help us. And Randy, if we all do our bit, we can change the world for these oh, people. Oh yeah, and, and for those of you who are wondering, yes, we do also have operations here in the United States uh, where we go in and we break up these rings. We have safe houses for women. This is a global effort uh, on our part because we think it's that important, but we can't do it without you. And you guys, so many of our viewers have been so faithful. In fact, many have stepped up in this campaign and said, we want to provide a $320,000 matching gift, which means normally the average cost of all our operations and the, the results, it, it costs about an average of $128 to reach or rescue or restore one child, one young adult. But through this matching gift, that means a gift today of $64 will achieve that. Your gift of $128 would, would help reach, rescue, or restore two children. Maybe you have the means to, to do that for 20 children, a gift of $1,280. What, whatever it is God has enabled you to do and puts on your heart to do, we just ask that we all join together, you with us, our partners in the field, and let's make a difference. Let's go into these dark places all over the world, shine the light and love of Jesus, and shut down this evil. Will you go online or go to the phones today, make the best gift you can, and know that we will be rescuing and reaching and restoring lives with your help today. Innocent children and young people longing to be loved and cared for are being abducted and sold at the hands of violent predators forced into the evil industry of human trafficking. 
through Mission Rescue Life, you can reach out to warn children who are at risk for sex trafficking, rescue those already enslaved, and restore young lives and give them a future. With a generous $320,000 matching gift, now your gift of $128 to help reach, rescue, or restore one child can be doubled to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help save one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 Mission Rescue gift will be doubled to $64. With your gift today, we'll send you I Hear His Whisper. Each entry in this beautiful 365-day devotional will encourage you with words of comfort, joy, and love as you encounter God's heart and hear His gentle voice. With a gift of $128 or more, you'll receive What Does Your Jesus Look Like? This captivating book by sculptor Scott Stearman shares compelling stories and beautiful images, revealing how we can be the image of Christ to a watching world. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help save 20 children, and you may request our inspiring bronze sculpture, Let the Children Come. Please call, write, or make your gift online. I hope you are going online or giving us a call right now. Make the best gift you can, and, and thank you for your continued support. Sheila, I have been so blessed by today's guests. Yeah. The book is fantastic. I just want to throw sort of the last, Caleb, any final thoughts? Um, uh, yeah, I, I feel like what has really worked for me, like depression is so easy to fall into. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like I would have fell into it so easily if I would have just focused on the things I lost in my wreck, mm -hmm. which were any hope of becoming a professional athlete <laughs> because that was always a dream I had in my heart for myself. Yeah. But I'm seeing that God has also <laughs> left me on this earth with a lot of new things that I didn't have before the wreck. I, this platform, this influence, this boldness, this is all new. And once I begin to truly embrace that, I've seen God use me in ways he never could before. Wow. Look Out World, Caleb is on the way. Hey. Check out their website and thank you so much for being with us. You We've bet. loved it and thank we you. will see you next time on Life Today. God bless. every problem that the enemy can highlight, there is a promise from Christ to counter. Sheila Walsh, tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.